says, I can't do it yet because I'm still preparing you. And don't allow the preparation to keep you from your promise. And don't, under, don't, and don't underestimate how God does this thing. That just because it's delayed never means it's denied. Right. Because my faith says, I see it, and all I'm doing is I'm just waiting on it. With expectation, with a smile on my face, I'm ready to receive what God has for me. Say amen. Amen. So this is why, man, we have to learn how to trust God for faith, but we walk by faith and not by sight. So here is the simple definition of what is faith. What is faith? Faith is to believe God, to fully trust, to be so confident in him that you base your actions on what you believe. Again, faith is to believe God. Say, I believe God. To fully trust, to be so confident in him that you base your actions on what you believe. So you must understand that the foundation of faith has to do with what you believe. Now you guys understand why I always tell you that never try to change your habits without changing your belief. Because if you don't change what you believe, you will never change long term what you're called to do. That we, you have to get to a place where the devil doesn't trick you to start trying to modify your behavior without changing your mind first. This is one of the reasons why I always try to tell you, get in the word of God, get immersed in the word of God, let the Bible transform your mind, read books in such a way that it transforms your thinking process, get around people that think, act, look different than you so that it can work on your mind, so that it can develop in your belief system. One of the reasons why we get comfortable in going back to people and being around people that don't necessarily do our life any good is because it's comfortable to believe stuff. It's uncomfortable to really challenge it. Let me say this to you as a Christian, that it, just because you believe what you believed last year doesn't mean you're growing. You should be stretching yourself. You should be developing yourself. You know, the church has this idea when they talk about doctrine that they feel like doctrine is something that doesn't change. I absolutely don't agree with that because God has not revealed all of who himself is yet. This is who, the, who I know God is in 2015. But man, what about when my daughter is in 2072 and God has revealed himself in a greater fashion? Because the more you study, the more you learn about God. The more you get in the word of God, the more you get in the book, the more God reveals himself to you. So if you feel like you're stale, change it up a little bit. If you feel like you haven't gotten to a place where you're growing, change up the subject matter a little bit. Do something to jumpstart your faith so that you don't keep walking around in life in mediocrity. Remember, like I said last week, I would rather be on the water with Jesus than in the boat with mediocrity and mediocre people. You want to get to a place where you're around people that challenge you, not just people that make you comfortable. Some people should make you uncomfortable. Some conversations should make you stretch yourself. Some conversations should make you sit down, shut up, and not have a response. Because those are the things that will challenge your mind for you to grow in faith. Y'all good? That's what I'm trying to get you to understand how to grow in a greater level of faith. So faith is to believe God. I believe God. To fully trust God. That even when I can't trace a man, I trust him. And I'm so confident in God that it allows me to relax. That I know God's got me, man. I know that God has got me. God is going to take care of me. I'm confident in this very thing. That the same God that kept me is going to be the same God that's going to grow me. I'm confident that God will never lie. That he's the man that will never lie. Nor is he the son of man that he should repent. He doesn't change his mind about what he said he's going to do concerning me. That's why I keep my faith in God. Say, I believe God. I believe God. So, to have God is to be fully convinced of the truthfulness and the reliability of God and his word. Again, to have faith is to be fully convinced of the truthfulness and the reliability of God and the word, which is the Bible. Jesus says in Mark 11 and 23, it says, For I assuredly, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, say believes, believe. the things that he says, say says, yes. will be done, he will have, say have, yes. whatever he says, say says. So understand how awesome the scripture says. It says he says, and then it says he believes. Then it believes he says, then it says he has, and then it says he says. Again, the scripture says here, man, this is awesome. This guy getting the word, man. This will, this will help. This will inspire your faith. It says, man, if you say to the mountain, be removed. So that means the first thing I got to do is open my mouth. I got to declare faith. Faith is not quiet, my friend. Faith is not just something 
that I just kind of sit on it. Faith has this declaration to it, has an authority to it. It says, it says to the mountain, be thou removed. And then it says, don't doubt in your heart. So it means don't say something and then doubt it. It says, if I'm going to open my mouth and say it, that means I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe what it says. So I say it, then I believe it, and then I say it again because I got to make sure that I close that thing up. I don't allow the enemy to convince me otherwise because what he always does is this. Oh, you really believe that? I'm going to throw some tests at you. I'm going to throw, throw, I'm gonna throw something so big at you that will make you think that what you said was a flat-out lie. And then what you got to do is get back up, see the circumstance, and say the very same thing you said. I'm trying to inspire somebody to have some faith in here today. That will quit saying what the enemy says. Quit saying what the people say. Quit saying what your circumstance say. And learn how to say what God says. Yeah. What God says is what settles it for me. If God said I'm a habit, then I don't care what you think, I'm going to have it. If God say I'm going to do it, I don't care what you think, I'm going to do it. If God say he's going to give it to me, I don't care what you say, he's going to give it to me. Good measure, press down, shake it together, yeah. run it. Yeah. Yeah. Run, say, come man, I'm going to, I'm trying to like teach, preach, I don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to give you, what I'm just trying to give it to you today. So if y'all just, if I preach, then let me preach. If I teach, then let me teach. Y'all cool? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's how we do that. So, man, understand that faith causes you to know in your heart before you see with your eyes. Faith causes you to know in your heart before you see with your eyes. This is one of the reasons why you have to learn how to see with your mind's eye. You have to close your eyes sometimes. You have to envision what God is saying for you. There are many times I stand here and I close my eyes and I envision this place completely packed to capacity. I close my eyes and I imagine our bank account completely packed to capacity. I close my eyes and I imagine us blessing the community in greater ways. That we gave away $3,000, why can't we give away $20,000? I sit there with this expectation that, God, you're going to do greater. I'm not going to ask God to reward me on the same level of faith that I gave him the first time. This time I'm asking him for greater faith. Y'all hear me? So y'all say, well, God, I lost that. Give me that back. God is saying, don't limit me. I want to give you something greater. Don't ask me for that back. I want to give you something greater. If you would just believe in me, I can give you something greater. Yeah, they repoed the car, but I can give you something better. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. dropped the house. Yeah, I can give you something better. I need you to stretch out. Stretch out your faith a little bit. Challenge me. I'm God. And besides me, there is no other. I don't want to just do small stuff. I'm the one that created the heavens, the moons, and the stars. I'm the one that created every single thing that you see. I created the mountains, the valleys, the lows, the rivers, everything. You need to tell me I can't provide for you. Challenge me. I'm God. Come on, man. Come on, put some faith on it. This shit, I'm challenging y'all. God, man, if you're the one that can do all that stuff, my situation is so small compared to what you've done. I believe God. So don't tolerate your circumstances and your situations, but you have to learn how to put your faith on it. Don't just tolerate your circumstance and your situation. You have to learn how to put your faith on it. Learn how to put your faith on your situation. Learn how to believe God and decree and declare a thing, yeah. and it shall be established. That's why I'm learning men now how to speak like God would speak. I'm learning now to just uh, develop a God kind of language. That just like when it was the earth was void, it was void, it was dark. God said, let there be light, and there was light. I'm learning in this situation of my life to learn how to speak by faith and not by what I see. I speak that you're going to do it, and I believe it in Jesus' name. My prayer now has went from I'm asking God for stuff. It is declaring what God has already told me. I changed my whole mind. I'm in a place of declaration now. I believe to receive all the promises that you have for me. The promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. God, you ain't scratching your head. You are determined that you want to bless me. You are determined that you want to do everything you want to do in my life. You are determined that you want to do what you want to do in our church. Now I'm just speaking it out. I'm learning now how to have the God-like faith. To speak like God would speak. To have enough word to say this is what God said. If he said it, I know his word will never return to him void. So guess what I'm learning how to say it now because his word won't return to him. So that means it got to be established. If you want something to be established in your life, learn how to speak the word. Yeah. Speak the word in your life. So understand that faith always has 
corresponding action. And I'm going to give you guys some points here. I've preached a little bit. I'm going to give you some points, and I'm going to be out of your way. But you have to understand that faith always has corresponding action, that we talk what we really believe, and we act according to what we really believe. People tell me, and they tell me stuff all the time, and I'm like, yeah, that's great. It sounds good, but the next thing I'm going to do is watch what you do. Because you have to understand that your faith, your corresponding action of your faith is by how you live life. What you do, what your values are, what your value system is, tells me what you really believe. And so this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. It. Faith without works, corresponding action, is completely dead. You can't just believe God for something and not do something toward it. This is why I always tell you that if you believe in God for something, then always spend your time in a place of preparation. That don't just wait for God to just boom, drop it on you. God is saying that I need people to learn how to manage what I'm giving to them. That's what the corresponding action is. You have to know that if God, you ask God for some money, then you got to learn how to manage it. Faith without works is what? Dead. And so many of us are learning. We're living from miracle to miracle. And God is saying you can live from faith to faith. That's absolutely okay with him. He says live from faith to faith, but don't just live from miracle to miracle. That if I bless you with the money that you prayed for, then use it for the thing I said use it for. Because that's learning how to use your faith with your actions. Amen? Y'all with me with that so far? All right, so how to develop your faith. I'm closing here in about five minutes. How? Six ways to develop your faith. Number one is listen to the word of God as much as possible. Listen to the word of God as much as possible. Hear me, Christians. Hear me, church. In our leadership team, I posted this video, and I posted it on my Facebook, too, about the churchless, the churchless Christians, that so many people are not going to church anymore. They don't believe that church is relevant. They don't believe there's no reason to keep going to church. But the scripture is very clear in Romans. It says, how can you hear without a preacher? How can a preacher preach unless he's been sent? That the way that you receive the faith is through hearing the word of God. This is what Paul is trying to get the, 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 the Roman church to understand here in chapter 10. He's saying, listen, if you want to receive the faith, you guys that are Jews, if you're going to receive the faith in Christ that he is the Messiah, you need to hear the preacher. And the preacher can't just preach unless he's been sent. So understand that what the, 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 the apostle is saying here is this. That the people have to pay for the preacher to go preach the word of God so that people can hear the faith so that they can come into a greater knowledge of who the son of God is. So that's the correct interpretation of Romans chapter 10. But for the principle here, I need you to understand that faith comes by hearing the word of God. The more you hear the word of God, the more the Bible is taught to you, the more it is preached in you, faith then develops. I'm tired of people that are telling me what they think and what they feel. What they think and what they feel, although it only has merit in your life, it does not have merit for the kingdom of God. What you think and what you feel and I and all of that stuff is not the place that I want to be in. I want to be in a place now where I think like he thinks. Faith comes by hearing. And so I'm learning now how to engross myself in the word of God to get God's mind on it, to listen to teaching, to listen to podcasts to read books, to read your Bible, to have conversation with people talking about the word so that you can get the word of God in your life. So understand, it's bigger than just coming to church, but this is the first gateway for you to hear it, and then from there you have to then take the processes and the steps after you leave here to make sure it stays in your life. You want to know why most believers don't become, they're not victorious? Because by Sunday, either Sunday evening or Monday afternoon, they don't hear or remember anything that was said Sunday. You want, you want me to teach you the art of hearing? The art of hearing has nothing to do necessarily with your ears. It has the art of doing, of rehearsing, listening, and taking in with your heart. And then the scripture says hearing, it has to deal with the concept of taking it in with your heart. So it goes from your head, it goes from head knowledge to heart knowledge. That's how you begin to hear the word of God. The one, that, the one, that, the way that you always do that also is through rehearsing the matter. This is why I'm telling you, man, you got to learn how to take notes. You got to learn how to find the way that you're able to ingest the information. Because the biggest lie you're going to tell to yourself is that I will remember that. The biggest lie. 
we all tell to ourselves is, I'll remember that. You won't remember that because remember the story? The enemy sends the, 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 the enemy comes and he goes to steal the, directly the word of God. He, his song falls on particular kinds of ground and guess what he does? He instantly comes to steal the word of God. So you have to be aggressive about not allowing the enemy to snatch it and it means putting it in a place where you can remember and rehearse the word. So listen to the word of God as much as possible. Listen to it as much as you listen to music. Listen to it as much as you watch your regular TV program. Find a way to ingest yourself with the word of God. But you know, hey, if you spend a lot of time on the toilet, then have your word right there. <laughs> to get it in your life. Number two is this. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Jude 1 and 20 says, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. This is why having the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so important. Having the baptism of the Holy Spirit is less about what you're doing publicly with it than more so what you're doing privately with it. The Apostle Paul really kind of corrected them because he was like, y'all act like y'all so spiritual because you stand up in church and you babble off in tongues that nobody understands, but you don't know how to appropriate it. What I'm trying to get you to understand is when you have the Holy Spirit in your life, if you learn how to use it at home and develop your prayer language, it'll inspire faith in you. The Bible says that when you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it prays perfect prayers. So at times when I don't even have the dialect or the words to be able to say to God, this is all I need to pray and to get off, when I pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes it all in utterances and groanings, and it takes it directly to God. Nothing hindering it. No, no atmosphere is hindering it. Is when I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, God hears my perfect prayer. So number two, when you want to learn how to develop your faith, learn how to pray in tongues. Learn how to use your prayer language. And if you don't have that gift, I want you to start asking God, God, baptize me with the Holy Ghost. All you have to do is pray it. God don't necessarily have to give it to you at church. He can give it to you at home. God can give it to you in your car. You just got to be open for God. God to bless you and to baptize you because it's a gift he wants to give to you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, number three is this, obedience. Say obedience. obedience. Understand that your faith is developed through obedience. This, is, this quote was pretty awesome from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. It says, for faith is only real when there is obedience, never without it, and faith only becomes faith in the act of obedience. Again, for faith is only real when there is obedience, never without it, and faith only becomes faith in the act of obedience. Now, so it basically teaches you that obedience is what builds and inspires your faith. Understand that the word obedience does not mean control. The word obedience means submission. So if you get that in your head, then you won't feel like when somebody tells you to do something that you necessarily don't feel like doing, that is control. Or even if somebody's telling you to do something that might be uncomfortable for you, or even regiments, that doesn't necessarily mean control. It means submission. And so when you obey God, that means you submit to the will of God for his life, for your life, and then that's how faith is inspired in your life. Say obedience. Obedience is better than any level of sacrifice that you make. Then when God says it, that's what you do. It's learning how to step out on water. It's literally like Peter said. He says, Peter, he says, God, he says, man, if it's you, he says, bid me to come out on the water. And so when God says, come, he didn't say, well, uh, no, he just obeyed. This is where the Christians have to get back to. The church has lost the art of obedience. And that's one of the reasons why we're not really walking in a level of faith. And it's quiet in here when we talk about this subject. Woo! Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yeah, this is good for you. This is good for you. Say, this is good for me. This is good for me. It's all right. It's good for you. But the reason why a lot of us are not operating in the level of faith is because we don't obey. We live in a rebellious generation. Can't nobody tell me what to do. I do what I want to do when I want to do it, and I'm going to move at the speed of what I want to. Or you're the type of person that hesitates, and on the inside, you're, you're standing up, but you're sitting down on the outside. You know, people like that, that they have this disposition that they're listening, but really on the inside, they're like, man, ain't nobody going to do nothing you say do. That's us understanding that if you want to operate in a level of faith, then you got to learn how to walk in a place of obedience. Say obedience. obedience. I'm going to move on. Y'all done got quiet on me. Number four.
more is give thanks. Say give thanks. Give thanks. Learn how to give thanks for the results before you see it come to pass. But the way that you inspire your faith is to thank God for what he said he's going to do well before you get it. Well before you see it come to pass, learn how to give thanks. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the vision coming to pass for my life. Lord, I thank you for the vision of the church coming to pass. Lord, I thank you. I, th those are the declarations that are right. I thank you. I give you thanks well before it ever comes to pass. If you get to a place where you sit quietly when God is trying to get you to respond in a level of faith by your words, you will miss the blessing. It will pass over you. But learning how to give thanks in advance for what God is doing in your life is the greatest way to inspire faith. Number five is to say, speak the word. Speak the word. What I'm dealing with here is the art of confessing the word of God. Romans 10 and 9, again, it just talks about this idea that you learn how to confess the word. It is this idea of continually to speak the word. If you want faith to develop in your life, you have to confess it. You have to believe it. You have to say it, and when it says it, when you say it, it settles it. Learning how to confess the word of God, to speak it over and 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 over, and over so that you can see the promise of God come to pass for your life. When you learn to confess the word, then nothing can stop you from believing it. This is the power of confession. Because when you confess it, you convince your mind, and you convince your spirit that it's going to happen. So whatever happens, whatever circumstance, you get back in place and you keep moving forward because your confession has not changed. Y'all with me? Confession. Number six is this. This is the last one here is praise and worship. Say praise and worship. Understand that praise and worship is a very interesting thing here because what it does is it drives out darkness and it brings us to the throne of God and it brings our circumstances to the throne of God and understanding that praise is an act of faith and it helps you grow your faith when you praise God. Understanding that you're praising God who, who you can't see. You can't even see him and you're praising him. So understand this idea that if you can thank God and praise God for a God that you can't see, why can't you do the same for the promises of God that you don't see? When you don't see it, it's the same deal. It is just me confessing what I believe God is going to do. Is your faith growing this morning? So it's commanded for us in Hebrews 13 and 5, and 15, I'm sorry, it commands us to praise God. And understanding that worship here is admiring God through the Spirit. It is us understanding as we perceive who God is, as we understand what his power is, as we understand his faithfulness, as we understand his love, as we understand that we can trust him, as we understand that we can put our faith in him, things begin to grow. Remember the story that Pastor Z talked about with Paul and Silas? Remember when he talked about the story when they were locked up in staves, they were in the inner ports of the, of the prison, and they just didn't know what to do. They learned how to praise God. They were in staves. They were in bondage. They were locked away. They had so much stuff going on in their life, but they learned how to praise God for the victory that they saw on the other side. And then this is what God wants to do in, some of, in all of our lives, that we have to understand that circumstances and situations hold us in some level of bondage. And we're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out of this. This looks impossible. And God is saying, if you would learn how to put your praise on it, you put your faith on it, and you begin to thank God in advance, yeah. God says it gives me something to work with. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what God is trying to get us to do. Give him something to work with. Move beyond just, a, just waiting for stuff to happen and learning how to make stuff happen. Yeah. That's what your faith is, is learning how to make it happen. I'm putting my faith on it. I'm walking by faith. Not by sight, not by what I see, but by what God says in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every single person here that's under the sound of my voice. I believe, God, that you're going to do something extraordinary in all of their life. I thank you for stirring their faith. I thank you in Jesus' name that they learn, God, what faith is. They learn, God, that you want to do the exceedingly. They want you want to do the abundantly, the above all that you can ask or think in their life. And I'm asking you, God, that you stir the spirit of faith in their life. Stir them up, God. Cause them to believe again. Cause them, God, to cast down their doubts and to learn how to trust you to do the great measure of things in their life. And I speak to their mountains and in the name of Jesus I declare that their mountains are moved and God they're able to see the promises of God come to pass in their life. If you believe that today, give God a praise in advance. Come on, I want you to give God a 
Just one. 